Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Posca Paint Party. We're so happy you're here, and we are doing something today that everybody's been asking for. Everybody always asks this question, can you blend the Posca paint pens? And the answer is yes. For some reason, people are always surprised. And um, But once you know the blending techniques, you can really take your painting from good to great. So that's what Drew is going to guide you on today. Yeah. So I'm playing with this camera. This is Haley's idea. Thanks, Haley, because this is going to be really cool. We're going to get able to get up and close. If you can see this one camera moving around. So we're going to really try to show the blend. So that's going to be great. And uh, we're doing this because everybody requested it. We've done other blending classes. Um, but uh, I just really want to kind of drive some things home. So to help you get that blend right. And um, we're going to talk about all those things again, but go a little bit more in depth. So, Okay, and so we're going to get started in just a minute. But before we do, I want to invite everybody that's on here live with us right now to share in the chat where you're from. We have people come from all over the world. And it's really fun to see where you're all from. And um, also feel free to ask questions in the chat. And as always, if you want, you will have a chance to share your art with us and to get your video spotlight, spotlit, is that a word? I don't know, spotlight it. Yes. Um, okay, and of course, everybody, every week, one person wins a box of paint pens and we will choose the winner afterwards and announce it in both our email newsletter and our Instagram, Brophy Art Academy Instagram. All right. I'm going to go back to my super secret room behind the curtain. All right. So I'm I'm here. All right, everybody. Um, thanks for being here. And um, I just wanted to start out by kind of showing a few things. Um, you know, we, we've been doing these classes for a while. And, you know, this was last week's piece, which came out really cool. I hope all of you all saw the time lapse. And I hope you all enjoyed uh, the exercise of doing the Bali mask. And when I grabbed this one, I just really was like looking at some of them. And, uh, you know, this was the Pure Joy one, which was really cool. And then way back when, when we did some skulls, uh, that was cool. And even uh, this one here, which was the, the alien guy that I did. But, um, you know, it was just really fun kind of looking at these. And we all uh, did blending exercises on these, even though you don't realize it. Uh, really, if you remember doing this in the sky and getting this blend of going, you know, swooshing around this way and then the wave going this way, um, all those blending techniques, we're kind of going to go over again, but not in a painting, just kind of as effects and really dive into how, how I do that and, and address some of the problems you might be having. So let's get rid of this one. Uh, Bali mask again was a lot of little blends. Um, so one of the things I want to uh, point out that it, with a canvas this size or painting this size, usually we're using very uh, smaller pens, usually the 5Ms. Um, these are 3Ms. If you're doing something smaller than this painting, you'd probably want to use 3Ms. If you're using something bigger, you would probably want to use the 7Ms. Um, and even bigger, you want to go to probably that 17 uh, which would be like more of a mural project. So when I'm thinking about this, uh, I always talk about having a blend of usually like three colors um, or that's a good basic blend, but a lot of times the blend goes all the way through. And I just, re you know, I kind of forgot that we had these blending sets that really kind of show that blend, you know, of, uh, you know, going all the way from black to dark green to light green to yellow to white, or that could be like more of a, um, the flame one where you're using these colors. And we put these together so people could just buy this if they're going to do like a, a red to yellow flame job on their surfboard or skateboard. Um, but we also had some really other interesting blending sets. Um, and I'm, these are all pre-prepared, so it's just really cool to see these. Uh, this is our flesh and bone blending set. And where if any of you saw me do the pinup girls on Instagram, 
these were the colors that I used to make those flesh colors. Um, and also like bone colors, like when I'm painting skulls and things uh, like I did on this, uh, this one, which has got, you know, grays and blacks. And then sometimes I do my skulls uh, with that, this, this light orange color that gives it that peachy kind of bone color. Um, so, you know, just thinking about some of these colors, of course, you know, my waves and skies get these, these uh, blues and purples. But another really interesting one is I call it blood and guts, which is kind of funny. But uh, anytime you're doing like lips or tongues or blood vessels or those types of things, I'm using these colors. Real basic blends and, um, you know, just kind of neat because we have these already pre-done. Um, but if you have a full set of Posca pens, you can kind of make any blend possible. And um, uh, we're going to start out with doing a, an exercise. And so let me get my glasses out. And Haley, if we can switch to my board here. Um, let's see if I can. And I'm going to do with the, the, use the 7Ms just because they're real easy to blend with. You can use the fives, which these are these if you're doing something smaller. But I want to be able to do it big so that um, you can see. And so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm painting on a coated paper, which the, pa the paint pens work really good on. If you have canvas or wood, it, that works uh, the best. If you have uncoated paper, it's going to be really hard to get a blend. So um, preferably you're working on a coated paper, a wood product or a canvas product. Um, in that way you can get the blend. So I've said this many times, but the, the blend only works when you have a um, small area. You don't worry about a whole area, you just worry about one little small area at a time. So I'm gonna do the inside of a sun right here. I got it sketched on here and I'm gonna go very fast. So I don't know if I can do this with the little camera first. I'm gonna do a section of it maybe. Let's see if I can do this. Let's get them all open. This is brand new, so I'm gonna see if this works, Haley. Let's hope it does. There's my camera. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna go and do this arc for this. Do you want me to come hold the camera for you? I think that would be good. <laughs> Sorry, folks, we're working on the fly with this. Let's see if we can get Maria to hold this camera. There we go. So this is the arc, right? And so I'm going to do like these little hatchy marks and I want everything to go towards that point right there. So I got these like little hatchety marks. How is that looking? That looks pretty good actually. And see how, yeah, get, get it in there. And I'm going to go all the way around. Now it's important that we keep that flow of that way I'm always pointing back towards this point right here. And that creates this effect of, um, of being uh, bursting out it, from, from the center. All right, so I got my other colors here. I got a little uh, yellow or green on this one. Another thing I'm gonna uh, show you, so this had a little green on it. You might wanna have two yellows and you mark them for red or green blends. I do that sometimes, that might help you. So I got these going, I'm gonna just do a little section at a time, I'm gonna reactivate. And then I'm gonna go right to the orange, half in and half out. So you can get that close, Maria. How's that? But you see how I'm blending that? And then I'm going out like this. And I can actually again go all the way to white. Oh, grab the paint. I got more cameras than I know what to do with. This is a lot easier without cameras. All right, so I can even go into the yellow and see I can go back and forth all the way to this point. And there we go. So we see that. And if you want it to blend a little bit, you notice I didn't go all the way around because it would have been really hard to keep that blend going. Uh, it's kind of hot here today. 
but we're going to go again back and forth and let's try to meet it up. And I'd like to mention, you know, this being able to blend with Poscas is really, Poscas are probably, you know, out of all the paint pens that are out on the market, Poscas blend better than pretty much any of the other brands out there. And that's because of the consistency of the pen is, is really nice and, and um, fluid. Uh, a lot of pens coagulate. That's one of the reasons why I don't like them. But can you folks see this blend? I hope so. Let me keep going around. This should be straight up and down right about there. I'm going to move a little bit faster. Half in and half out. But this exercise really helps you try to master this blend. Back and forth. A lot of times I can get it just right with one pass, but due to it being really warm outside, it's uh, harder to do. So if it's cool out or wet out, this process will be a lot easier. If you have too much yellow on your pen, you go and, and clean it off off the side. Something like that, and then straight up with that one. But you see this radial effect I'm getting. So one person asked, do you ever have a problem with the nibs um, clogging? Uh, I do not. Um, mainly if you're, if, you're, if you're not getting enough paint out of your nib, it just means you have to you know, go off the side and press down. So show it over here. So if I, go over here, honey, look at this pen. So I'll go off the side and clean it off over here and get it going. I don't press down here because it might have a spill. Um, or you could leave your pens uh, without caps for too long and that would create your a dryness, which um, would be like, you know, not necessarily clogging, but more of a, um, a dry out effect. Okay, so a couple of people are asking about what you're painting on. They missed it earlier. So can you mention that again? Yeah, this is just a coated uh, paper. It's actually the back of a poster. And I'm okay. using this. So I'm almost done with this little spot. And then I'm going to show you something else. Now, I'm going to stay on this color combination because this is a real popular one. And I know this might be you know, uh, something a lot of people already know, but this practice is really good, this radial effect out. Um, so you see how that, that works, right? And it's a little, you know, not uniform. Sometimes you can get really uniform, but I almost try not to because it'll get, it'll get bandy where it's like a, a row of yellow or yellow, row of orange or roll red. So you want to mix that up a little bit. So now that I got my pens here, let me get all my caps back now that I don't have to hold the camera. Um, I'm going to do like one of these rays. So I have a ray here and let me just mark it so that you can see it, something like that, right? Now I do this on a lot of my paintings where I have these sun rays. Sometimes they look a little different, but it's something like that. Now it's the same thing, except for instead of a radial thing, this is like going out like that. So we want to create a blend that goes that way. And it's just a really good exercise there again to start with the darkest color first, which is the red, and go out maybe like this. And then right behind it, I come with the orange. I don't let it dry too long and then stretch it out. And then right into the yellow, half in, half out. And all my motions are the same with each color. And I really want it to, to you know, have this nice long blend to it, which is a little bit different than that radial blend, which was a little tighter. But it's the same, same process, just longer strokes. And you have to work fast. That's the key. You have to be fast and you have to be confident. And the confidence allows you to, um, to, to work fast due to the fact that you, you kind of have to. So then I'm going to add this like white. And 
That looks pretty good. Did you already answer this question? Cato asked, is it best to blend from dark to light or light to dark? It dark, uh, dark to light. So, um, and that is because it's, you're taking this color, so I'm putting a little red right there. So I start with that dark color and then I lighten up all the way out. And then as the pen gets more paint in it, it lets that blended color out and then goes back to the original color. If that makes sense. And so this is the same thing, big long strokes. So I wouldn't want to start doing this. It would create a different effect. It's big long strokes like this. And that's making this nice natural blend. The pen's doing all the work. I'm just keeping it consistent in my methodology or my methodology. It's a tough word. So you see how that has a nice cool blend to it. And then so I'm going to do the same thing here. Kimberly asked how about when you don't want the tips of your pens to mix with other colors, can you blend with your finger or another kind of tool? Um, you can, um, it's not as easy. The tip of the pen is doing all the work for you. So it's not gonna ruin your pens to do this. Um, if you wanna work fast and, and so that you don't have, the yellows tends to be the blending one uh, there again, if you want one that's going to be mainly blended with reds and yellow or reds and oranges, you have that one. Maybe mark the back of it that way and then have one that you mix with greens like that over here. Um, that could be a solution. I've seen people use Q-tips or actually a paintbrush. So they lay down the colors and then blend it with a paintbrush, um, which works good. Um, we've also used blending mediums um, or uh, kind of like a, a drying medium that keeps it from uh, drying up and use a brush that works really good. Uh, my friend Phil Roberts does that a lot. My friend, um, uh, I've got another friend that does that. But anyway, uh, that's a good way to do it. That blending medium is, um, is, is just a, a it's a liquid that keeps the paint wetter longer. All right, so you kind of get this idea. So I'll do one more of these guys. Do the dark color first. And it's just a little bit there, half in, half out. And you might discover something that works for you that, um, that you like to do. I'm just teaching you how I do things. And these are methods I've been doing for 30 years, allowing me to paint very fast and get these ideas out with confidence. Um, and that's what I want to give to you. I want to give you guys the confidence to, to just go after it and make some really cool paintings and not agonize over things so much. Um, it's going to take everybody a little while to, to master some of these techniques of blending. Um, but Everybody can do it. It's a, the pen is really great at, at doing this. You can see how that worked really well right there. Um, I don't worry that one of the biggest questions is, does it mess up the tip? And let's see if I can see it in the camera up here. Uh, not quite. There you go. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of color on there, but all I have to do is go off to the side and go like this. And it's clean again. There's no, look, it's all, it's all gone. So it, that's all I do. So that's why there's always a mess around my paintings. But you have to do that with your brushes too, right? If you were using brushes, you would have to um, clean them off with, uh, you know, water or um, thinner. So I'm going to do one more to do this effect. What I'm really stressing right here is this was a radial effect and this was kind of more of a linear effect. And that's the secret of the blend. You want to be able to pull these, these colors and use these effects to help make your painting more dynamic. So I wouldn't want to start coloring sideways and change the, the stroke mark. You want it to all be consistent. And when it's consistent, it adds you know, just it makes it look amazing. 
And it's a good way to practice too. Like some of these sun rays, you know, your first sun ray might not be that great, but by the time you get to your last one, you really got it figured out. I got some pins in my way. There we go. Half in, half out. Now that blend wasn't as good as my last one. So I can go over here and clean this tip off, get, get it more pure yellow, and then come back again. Something like this. And then I could add this white to really lighten up that yellow. Um, there again, the more colors you add, the more dynamic your blend is going to be. So we're going to get uh, some pretty dynamic blends going here in just a second. I'm just doing these simple ones first. So you can see how that really lightens it up. I can kind of play with it while it's wet a little bit more. And then I can kind of go down. All right. So Anthony said, by the way, my mom does vans with Posca. All right. Cool. And then, um, let's see, there was another, there was a comment I wanted to read. Oh, uh, Janet Marie Lopez asked, have you ever tried other brands of paint markers? And I know we talked about that before, but maybe you can answer this question again. Yeah. So yes, I have used lots of different pens, pretty much all of them. And, you know, hey, every, whatever you have, I'm sure works great. I just found that Posca worked the best. Uh, the medium is a little bit more liquidy. Um, a lot of the other pens seem to co coagulate easier. And um, that's a problem. So, like, if your pens are drying up, especially after you spent money on pens and they dry up uh, after the second time you used them, they're pretty, pretty upset. So... I don't like this dark blue right here is somebody left the cap off. So I'm going to use this one. All right. So now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do some bubbles. And so what's cool about the bubbles is we're going to be doing the blending just the same. I'm going to be using dark blue, light blue, and white. And this is more of a circular effect. So let's use all the fives. And with this, it, it goes back to the same thing. Start with the darkest color first. But, you know, let me outline one of these. We've got a bubble here, a bubble here, a bubble here. All right, so we're going to do all these, like, little bubbles. What happened to my up-close camera? Um, it just wasn't too working well. Too difficult. All right. Well, hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, we can um, see it. It looks great. Okay. So let's start with this one. So usually when I'm doing this, I just want to do the darkest color where I know where the shadow would be, which is kind of at the bottom of this, let's say. And I do this little half like smiley face looking thing. And then same thing, I want it to look round. So I'm going, the stroke marks are very consistent going around like this. And then I go all the way around. And then keep going all the way out. And you notice I'm, I'm keeping this round um, stroke mark, a little hatchety stroke mark. And then I'm going to come with the last color, the white, in the middle. And the same thing. So we're going to do this a number of times so we can get it right. And these are great. You know, when I'm doing live paintings, this is one of the things I have people do is do these little bubbles because just the one bubble by itself is not that that impressive. But if you do like 50 of these overlapping, it starts to look really amazing. And so here we go again, little, little smiley face looking and then half in, half out. And keeping that round stroke mark. And this is a great exercise for blending because it's small enough where it won't dry up on you. And I'm just kind of going around the outside and you can see it lighten up as you get further out, which is really neat. And then we're going to go on the inside with the white and you don't want it pure white. We'll put some white in there and then we'll come back to the light blue and, and you can see it's just a lighter version of the, and that's how I do those. And this one's going to be overlapping right here. So I'm going to kind of just get where that would be there and half this smiley face. 
half in, half out. But they're all the same. So it, it's the consistency that really allows you uh, to create something amazing. Now, this is a pretty basic uh, blend and color. You're going to try to do the close up? I'm going to try something. Okay, Maria's going to try another thing and see if we can get this closer. We keep going all up and down. All right, so we see that. Now let's try one with another color in it just to make it a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to add black. So just imagine black. That's not going to be any closer, I don't think. Um, so I'm doing black just to show you how this would look different with one extra color. So I'd add a little black and so now we got four colors, but you can see how dark this is. And so I want to clean this pen off. That was probably a little too much black, but you'll see this come through. There we go, get really close. And half in, half out. Keeping that round stroke alive. And you can see as I go around, my, my pen drops all that other color and keeps the light blue and it looks really nice. I'm gonna go around here, I'm gonna drop down and get this guy. Make sure I don't leave any little white gaps. Something like that. All right, now I'm going to do the little white inside. So that really darkened it up a lot compared to that other uh, lighter one. Um, and depending on what you like, I like this really bright one, but sometimes you don't, you don't want that color change. We could add dark green and that could make that a, a lot different. So I can put this white line around this, let's say. If I want to lighten this up and then I come back to that light blue again and just kind of blend it so it looks like it has a halo of white around it. You see that? Let's do this one more time. Let's do it with the um, uh, without the black now that we got Maria here. All right, so we're going to go a big smiley face. So it's a lot of, lot of dark blue. Here we go again, half in, half out. Can really see that pen going in there. I'm not worried about messing up the tip. And then I just keep going around to keep that that round shape. Little tight little hatchet marks, and you can see the pen going back to light blue as I go around, dropping all that color. Now I'm going to go around get the bottom. Now it's a little um, dry right here, so I'm going to add a little bit. We got the fans going. It's really hot here in San Clemente, and it's drying super quick. So let's get this around and watch this. So that's kind of the outside of my bubble. I'm going to add a white around it. But you can see how I'm just playing with it at this point. I got most of that blend down. And then I'm going to do the reverse, kind of blend that white back into that other light blue. But it's very methodical. Uh, for those of you who have been struggling with the blends, um, this is a very methodical process and I don't get too ahead of myself. So this is a little white inside. And what's neat about this is um, the pens are opaque, so then I can add other layers on top so where these things are, clean off this white pen, I can actually add layers of white on top like this. You know, that's when I come around and I outline it in reverse coloring book style. So you can kind of see that. A lot of times I don't like to make them perfectly round. I'll kind of do things like this to kind of, you know, make it more kind of more natural. Something like that, but you get the idea. So I clean it up in the end. 
Maybe I'll add it more oblong, something like this. All right. So I'm going to show you something else. Thanks, Maria. Okay. Haley, can you switch to the other camera? The big Thank one. You. I'm going to do the, the flower over here. So uh, um, I'd like to hear some more questions. I'm going to show you how to do a more dynamic blend. If you guys remember when we did flowers, um, we uh, did some really cool blends. And this blend is going to be pretty rad. It's going to be purple to red to orange to yellow to white. And we're going to do it on the flowers. Now, this is a great, um, uh, these are all like just like little practice things, like little uh, things that you can do to help you blend. But I'm going to do a plumeria flower. So I'm going to outline it in yellow so you can see. And it's basically just a five petaled flower. You guys see it? And this is another exercise we do in the live classes. Now I know for guys, uh, painting flowers is not that exciting, but this is a great exercise in blending. So I'm gonna only worry about one petal at a time, which makes this uh, very doable. And I'm gonna start with the darkest color first and then move out. So at the very center, I'm gonna have a little bit of purple. Then I'm gonna go to the next color and add a little bit of red, half in, half out like that and then a little bit of orange half in half out and it's all that same stroke mark right of that shape of the flower then i'm going to go to the yellow half in half out on the orange and that orange dried a little quicker so i'm going to go back and blend it a little bit better and then i'm going to take the white and blend it all together make sure that blue is off there and I'm trying to get my hand out of the way so you can see. But this exercise is a really cool one to do. Now, just by itself, it's not that cool. I might want to do this little hook right in here. And kind of get it around. I wish that was closer, but it's all right. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the next one. And so what I tell people is by the time you get out to the last petal you really have kind of mastered that blend now you can do this a little bit you know without this many colors and make it a little simpler for yourself I got the Katie had a question I have a few questions so let's yeah, just please. through them and we're at the four 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 wait a minute what am I trying to say 33 minute mark is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, and um, I want to remind people if anybody wants to share, there's a little raise your hand function. So raise your hand. Um, and some people have trouble finding that little raise your hand function. So then just type in the chat and hopefully I'll catch it and um, we can share you. So um, Katie asked, is it possible to do a translucent effect with Posca? similar to your sacred geometry series, like the glowing effect? Um, it is. Uh, usually that is um, done with a blending medium. And so uh, you have to thin it out with the blending medium so that you can get that trans more of a translucent kind of fade going. Um, I usually do that with translucent airbrush paints which allowed me to, to get that um, effect a lot smoother. Um, but it can be done with the blending medium. Okay, great. And then um, let's see, how do you blend the little bubbles in to add texture? Nick Lewis wanted to know. Um, the, te the texture itself is almost like a, uh, watercolor effect if you can see on these it's just these small hatchet marks and it kind of blends in together and it, it, it like if you look up close it does have texture to it but you know if you, a little bit further away it all starts to blend together it's being able to create that effect so um, if you wanted to add some texture to it you could definitely do that sometimes I turn these things into little skulls and stuff and add color or uh, you know, puts things inside them. So you can, th there's a lot you can do 
depending on uh, what you want your outcome to be, the main thing I just want to get is the fact that you can blend these things uh, very efficiently. You just, you got to work in like little small areas and not get ahead of yourself. I think that's my biggest um, point today so that you don't get frustrated because I think a lot of people try to do these vast areas and it dries on them and then they can't get it to uh, blend the way they want. Now keep in mind, you know, once you get the first blend down, you can add effects, you know, on top of that uh, with other colors. So like kind of going back to the, these uh, guys over here, like let's say if I wanted to start, you know, doing something like that where I'm adding like almost like a, a round light blue glare on there if you can see that, and then I could take uh, another white, clean this one off and accent it on one side, something like that, you know, so, you know, there's definitely some, you know, effects that you start to do. Uh, and I do that on most of my paintings, but that's a secondary, like that's, I almost paint every painting like three times and I do different effects each time. Let me make sure I can do this without covering up the but you see now that i'm on my last one all together this looks like a really nice flower and it's because i did it consistently the same each time and i had this consistent blend that was repeatable jody asked how would you blend the sun from an underwater view Oh, that's a great question, Jody. So I've done that in a lot of my paintings. And let me do this last little bit of flower and I'll kind of do something like that. My a couple of people that want to share. So maybe before we go to the next segment, could we take a break and let a couple people share? Yeah, let me just do this thing with Jody just asked. So there's my flower, came out pretty good. I'm going to have some leaves here too. So just imagine if this was sun was going down in the water and, you know, it kind of went down in the water like this, right? Something like that. And then, you know, maybe that red's coming through as a little purple and, you know, you got these crazy greens, but I, I would do this and then Maybe have some blues in there because the water would be mainly blue. And I'll try to keep some kind of effect. That's a radial effect. This would might be a more of a linear effect because the water is kind of lapping at it linearly, or maybe it's a reflection on the water. I didn't think about this. Thanks, Jody. This is this would be good. I'm going to have a skull in there. So I'm going to do that, but you can kind of see I'm bouncing back and forth between colors, but I'm creating this effect. Something like this, but that the, the blends are the same, you know, you're basically just going, you know, through the colors and trying to get them to blend evenly before they dry. Kind of see that? So then out here, it would probably be more dark. You know, so you imagine, you know, something like that. But do I do that in the waves. The waves usually have some type of light coming through. We have All a right. question from Dan Wilbanks. He said, I noticed the white to be very runny. Is there a way to fix that? What, what was it? The white? Yes. Yeah, so if there if any of your pens are runny, that means that the the pigment inside is not mixed very well. So really got to shake them. So it's it seems like sometimes if you haven't used your pen for a while, it, it'll get um, a little runny. Um, let's do this like little thing right here. This is like a little water bubble. 
Um, but you, you got to shake them and then start them over. Try to get that nice thick pink pigment out of the pen. Sometimes the blacks do it. All the colors will do it. If the pen starts going translucent, that means the pigment is not mixed very well. And that usually happens on a new pen or a pen that you haven't used in a long time. And I have so many pens, sometimes I pick up one and it's like gone almost clear. And I have to shake it really good. Um, there's a little uh, water spray kind of adding while it's wet. I can kind of add some more darks, something like that. Okay. All right. This is all super helpful. Thank you. And I want to, can I just take a moment? I want to shout out to everybody. Um, I want to shout out, thanks for being here right now. We have 56 people on with us and all our right. goal is to have over a hundred. And so I want to ask everybody to tell your friends, anybody that would benefit from these paint parties. And um, I also want to shout out to Hugo, who's in La Boca, Buenos Aires. Hugo said he just got his first Posca paint pens in. All right. They're, they're in Buenos Aires. They're very expensive. The good news is they last a really long time. So you can make them last a long time. Just make sure you always put the caps right back on it. And um, they'll last, they'll go, they'll go very far. Yeah. And okay. um I also just wanted to shout out to, I mean, we have people from all over the world on here. We've got Hot Rod from Summerlin, BC and Stephen Honolulu. We've got a bunch of people in New York City in that area. Um, you all should uh, hang out together and do these things live. Um, and then we have Marcus in Bali. I don't know what time it is in Bali right now, but I think it's some uh, weird hour in the middle of the night there in Bali right now. I don't know. Um, but thank you. We're glad you all are here. Thank you. Yeah. So, so while Maria was talking, I just switched to our blood and guts blend, which is kind of black to purple to red to pink. And this is going to be a neat blend. I did the black first to lay down where those colors are going to be. And now I'm going to go to the red and pull it up and almost like this was like dripping blood or something. Um, and this is a really neat, fun effect. You know, if it's dripping, you're pulling everything down and the top of the skull or bubble, it's like a bubble skull basically. Um, so it's a mix between, you know, trying to get these ridges and, and, you know, just think about what shape you want this to look. So if I'm trying to, to make it look round or if I'm trying to make it look flat or if I'm trying to make it look uh, drippy, you know, that, that curve might be a little different depending on it. But like right there, it doesn't look like much, but those are like all the darks. And now I'm gonna clean off this tip, make sure it's nice and red. And I'm gonna go around and kind of clean it up. But I did this whole process the same and when I finish up, it's going to look really neat. And so if I did a whole bunch of these like little blood and gut bubble guys, um, it would look like a cohesive, like gooey, bloody looking thing. Um, or it could just be, you know, tongues and lips and that type of thing. Up here, I might try to make it look a little more um, round. Now, I'm struggling to get this done, uh, this blend done, because it's really drying here. Um, so be real conscious about where you're working. If you're working inside with air conditioner, this will, this blending process will be a lot easier. Um, if you're working outside, it's almost impossible if it's hot out. Um, it's just things want to dry really fast. So um, picking the place where you're going to paint is, is important. Uh, when I used to airbrush surfboards, it was always the battle of, you know, drying and not drying. So Jim said that. these blending classes are awesome. Cool. And, um, maybe we so, should do more of these. You know, we only have 15 minutes left. I think we should 
hop over to Heather Williamson. Yeah, let's see and some people. I'll Heather, keep working on mine. <clears throat> Heather actually is the artist who, Heather, I hope you don't mind without your permission. I used one of your Instagram photos in our newsletter and um, from uh, the last pink party, the, the Bali mask. Okay, I'm, I'm asking you to unmute. So we're gonna go with Heather, then we're gonna go with Steve Ertz, if I'm pronouncing your last name right, um, and then Kurt. So right. that's the order. And um, before I spotlight Heather, I wanted to mention something. There's somebody on here um, named Steven Garza. And Steven, I'm not gonna spotlight you, but I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna put, Steven, Steven's been on almost every paint party with us. And um, I just recently discovered that he's a stand-up comedian. Why he never told us that before, I don't know. But I was so excited that I found his Instagram. He's freaking hilarious. I'm sharing it in the chat. Um, okay. I loved it, Steven. Yeah, we were laughing so hard. We were watching your comedy routine where you were talking about being a, a um, a substitute teacher oh my gosh so funny i watched it so many times okay i'm gonna go to heather williamson now heather let's see what you're working on hey hi we gotta unmute you um she is unmuted but i don't know why we can't hear you it's it's on your end let's see i don't know you know what why don't you I, i'll tell you what sometimes when that happens you have to log out and log back in. So why don't, it only takes a minute. Why don't you log out, log back in and we'll come back to you, okay? All right. Okay, all right, now we're gonna go to Steve Ertz. If, and if I'm mispronouncing your name, Steve, correct. Hey guys. Hey Steve. Hey, how's it going? We're doing good, what you working on? I'm just trying to learn how to get these blends down. So how's it coming? You, it looks like you got the hang of it on the rays, especially. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to get it. Yeah. What size pen are you using? I have uh, the 7Ms. Uh, oh, cool. Some of the 3s and then some of the 5s. Yeah. So the 7Ms are going to be the easiest ones to blend since they have that big tip. Mm -hmm. And um, so it just takes practice and confidence. But I'm getting there. <laughs> right on. Well, cool. Thanks for being here. Where are you? Yeah. I'm in uh, Honolulu. Honolulu. Yeah. Catch, catch some waves for me if you can sneak yeah. out there. Oh, yeah. We can still surf, but, you know, all the beaches, no one's allowed to just hang out on the beach. Yeah. Right. As long but as I have a question for you. Uh, sure. Trying to get this guy to pop a little bit more. Uh, he's looking good. Maybe um, the scales, maybe add some, like, little lighter, uh, either light, uh, lighter uh, green uh, okay. white or yellow. That'll help. Seriously. Yeah, cool. Awesome. God, hey. that was good. Okay, we're going to go over to Kurt, our good buddy. Kurt, how you doing, Kurt? I'm Show fine. How are you guys? Oh, God, long time no see. What's up, man? I'm fine. How are you guys? We're good. How was the weather over there? It's hot. It's hot, <laughs> hot where you are? That's the way I like it. Uh, it's all right. I can take it. You can take it. You're the man. So what are you working on? <laughs> um, I'm going to show you. This is a blending hand I did a while back. Practice to my blends. Oh, that's perfect for today. Yeah, everybody see that? See how well he got all those blends and just shows you, like, all the little combinations? Yeah. And I did, wow. um, I, I tried, I, I, I like greens and blues, so I did another one of my logos. Oh, yeah. God, the ones in the, the cat's really nice, too. Like, the blends there. Looks good. What is that on, Kurt? On a piece of wood? No, it's a um, it's a it's a round piece of canvas I got from Target. Oh wow! It's a basic round canvas. Oh. Yeah, I haven't seen those. Oh, this round great. canvas. That's cool. Yeah, they're really nice to work on. Yeah. So you've been you've been busy over there, huh? Yeah, I'm just sitting at home trying to kill time, and whatnot. And I did this little guy too. Yeah, yeah, that is nice. You really got that blend, just That's like. like it's really soft and, and well done, Kurt. Thank you. And I like your art too, Drew. You, you do amazing stuff and I love your stuff. Thanks, man. Thanks, Kurt. We're all learning from each other, right? <laughs> all right, we're going to go. So Heather's back. We're going back to Heather. Can we hear you? Oh, we still can't hear you. 
Well, let, let's see what you're working on. Tell us what you're working on. Whoa, oh, look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Hold it up again. So you got some grays? Yeah, you're blending the gray really well. Yeah. So, you know, this, this is a great example of like uh, one of the things I haven't mentioned, just black, gray, and white. You can do a lot of good blends. So um, that might be something everybody wants to practice on is just doing a, a grayscale painting. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about shifting colors all around. You're just trying to get that grayscale. So it's nice to see that. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, and a lot of people are giving you kudos in the in the chat too, in case you want to check that out. Okay, and then one last person at for the moment. Uh, we still have nine more minutes, but the last person with their hand raised is Jody, our good friend Jody Trujillo. Show us what you've got. We can hey, only Jody. see fingers right now. Hi, aloha. Aloha. Well, aloha. I'm I just started, I'm, I'm working on another um, textured art piece. Oh so yeah, I can see that. You got a, is that a, like a marlin or something? Yeah, it's a marlin. And so I wanted to blend this, um, have like the sun peering through um, underwater, like he's coming up and the sun's shining on, down below. Yeah. And this is actually going to be a piece about, um, uh, for, um, keeping the ocean clean. So on the bottom here, there's going to be some sad stuff on the bottom. <laughs> some sad stuff on the bottom. Yeah. Well, they should, well, should make the sun and the marlin all pretty and then put the sad stuff below it. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was just, I've been doing a bunch of uh, uh, ocean life art and I was like, well, you know, I wanted something that's going to um, talk about something that I'm passionate about and that's the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. I can't wait awesome. to see that done. I like the te texture. I can see it in there. Now, now I just got to get all the white gone. Yes. Yeah. That's, and I was like, I should have done the, the back one first and then put the Marlin uh, on top, but I yeah. live and learn. <laughs> yeah, live and learn. Well, cool. Thanks for sharing. Well, I'll be looking for that on Instagram for sure. Thank you. Right on. So I'm working on these bubble skulls. If we can go to this screen right here, you can see how I've been dressing up these bubbles and just really playing with, with all this stuff and really just blending these colors so that it, I'm not trying so hard. I'm just kind of going with it. And, you know, if you do this consistently, that is the key word. So if I did all of this stuff around it consistently this way, then all of a sudden it would really look cool. And then keep in mind afterwards, I can come back and add like highlights, and things like this has a little blue on it, but that's all right. You know, you know, being able to, to add to it something like that, it really starts to come together. And then when you come back with the black outline, and you don't even need a black outline, um, you know, you could, you know, basically do these blends so well that you could do a, a, a realism type of painting. Uh, my buddy Phil Roberts is really good at that. Like he can make, you know, stuff look really nice. There's another artist, my friend Caspian uh, in Australia. He does some of the most amazing blending that you've ever seen. Uh, Maria, if you can put Caspian's Instagram, uh, he just did a dog that will blow your mind uh, I'll, blending. I'll find it. Um, I'm going to move on to my uh, skull and uh, flesh and bone uh, color blend. And this will be my last one for the day. I'll do it with the bed, big pens. So, you know, when you, when you see bones, they kind of have more of a, like, kind of a brownish, like, kind of color to them, like a tannish, you know, unless they've been laying out in the desert or something. So I'm going to add, like, this brown, which will be my darkest color. And this is the top of this skull that I'm going to put right in front of the sun. Um, but this could be just as well like a tree or it could be somebody's skin and or their hands, anything like that. I'm just doing this because this is an easy thing to do. So I do it the same way as the bubbles and everything else. I just try to imagine what the uh, blend stroke should be because this is the top of the skull. It should be kind of maybe round. Um, I've, I, uh, I took one... Uh, art class and I remember we had to draw a skeleton 
and it was so much fun. It was just in pencil and I had so much fun doing the shading and stuff. And this is just the same thing. Um, kind of like I was just saying, like using black, gray and white, just a grayscale would be a nice uh, exercise for a lot of you. The main thing with the Posca is not get ahead of yourself. You notice how I just did this portion of it. I didn't do all of it. So break down your painting into like little areas so that you can make it manageable. So I'm gonna do this area around this eye, same thing. I'm just gonna do a little where I think all the darkest colors are gonna be. In something like that, same thing, half in, half out. And I'm picturing this as his cheekbone, making it uh, uh, kind of rounded. And this is the eye socket, kind of making that a little rounded. And this is where it catches up to there. You know, and Janet I just, Marie said skeletons. Shoot, I wish I had that. I had to draw eggs. <laughs> yeah, I think I did a couple eggs, except for I drew something crawling out of the egg. Believe it or not, I got a bad grade in art class. Um, I couldn't, uh, I was just kind of bored. I do everything kind of fast and, but oh well, I still made it. So we have uh, another person who wants to share Anthony and we'll, we'll uh, when, let me know when you want me to get to, to him. Yeah, go ahead to Anthony and I'll just keep on working on this skull. You can look at my little picture and see me working and we'll go talk to Anthony. Okay, Anthony, we are coming to you. Have your art ready. Hi, how are hey, you? Hey, Anthony. Hi. How's it going? This is actually my first blending with Posca. And how'd it go? Uh... Oh, you did great. Look at that. Hold it up a little bit higher. Yeah. Great job. Oh, I love like the, is that like a little like screaming skull kind of? Yeah. That's so cool. Good job. So you, did you find it that it was helpful? Yeah. Yeah. You feel like you can do some more, some more blending and get some like more dynamic blends now? Yeah. I, I feel like I can. All right. Well, just just keep playing with it and like try to get rid of all the white on your paper and have fun with your painting. That's okay. what I'm trying to do. I'm just kind of going with it. And you know, this might not be some masterpiece, but I'm having fun painting it and I'm, I'm learning new techniques at the same time. Yeah. And I just want to remind everybody, if you want to get better and better at it, join us every single week because with consistency comes mastery. Oh, um, by the way, this is my sec second class here. All right. Good. Yeah. We're, we're happy you're joining us. Are you going to come back mm -hmm. again next week? Yeah. All right. Well, we're all learning together, so it's good. I like all the age groups. I like the, the different styles. You know, and this is, this is just like a a place where we can get together and I can share ideas. I uh, really loved what Kurt had to share and Heather had to share. Um, you know, so, you know, this is an opportunity for all of us to try different things. It doesn't mean you have to do them this way. I'm just sharing you like what I've been doing. And so it's just another thing that you have that you know how to do. And uh, it all starts to work out. So I'm on the teeth over here. This is the craziest skull ever. It looks like a, he's all teeth. Let's see. Now I can take the black. Any more questions? Oh, here comes Maria. You know what that means. Oh, she's going to cut me Party's off. Party's over when Maria comes. Yeah. Haley, can you spotlight? Thank you. All Thank right, you. Everybody. And I just want to uh, say um, thanks to Haley. Haley's the newest member of Brophy Art Academy. And... She's going to be helping us every week, and I'm really grateful to have her help, and she is an amazing artist herself. Haley, put your Instagram handle in the chat so people can find and, you. And we're going to be doing a drawing class here at the gallery with Haley. Yes, next week for local people, of course, because it's live in person. It's yeah, in San Clemente. So if you're here in San Clemente, uh, look it up, and uh, hopefully you can go, come join us. Go to Brophy Art Academy. 
www.thepowerfulmindset.com slash events. And that's how you're going to find out about all of our online events and our live events. And we do a lot of things. So just thanks everybody for being here. And we will do this again, same time, same place next week. And of course, one of you will be the lucky winners of a Posca paint pen set. Yeah. And so next week I'm excited because I've decided that we're going to do a rendition of one of my uh, famous paintings. And it's also the very first painting I ever did with Posca on canvas. So I was painting surfboards before I was doing canvases and uh, the paintings called Wyland inspired after uh, Wyland in Haleiwa, Hawaii, who uh, was a friend of mine and uh, was very nice to me when I was young. And so I did a spoof off of one of his paintings and it has sharks and dolphins and octopuses and suns and waves in it. So we're all gonna create our own uh, rendition of Wyland and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, so join us next week. It's gonna be the brophy version of a paint and sip. So bring your sippy cups yeah. or your wine or your uh, coffee, whatever you like to yeah. sip. And um, we'll see you then. Yeah. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Bye, everybody.